All right, uh, welcome back to Rise and Shine. And as we promised you, we do have a very special personality in the studios. Well, some people want it to happen. Some make it happen, whereas some wish it happen. Well, this is a personality who has really made it happen in his life in order to achieve his dreams and goals. And when speaking of him, he has been a person who has been motivating a lot of people. And mm -hmm. when speaking of him, he is also a public speaker, an entrepreneur, a motivational speaker, a vocalist, an actor, an artist, and also a singer, I would say. A multifaceted personality he is. And a very good morning to you, Gautam Sharma from India, who is here at Rise and Shine to motivate us, Sri Lanka. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Buddhima, and uh, good morning, Varuna. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for inviting me here. Yeah, right. Uh, so, Gautam, when <coughs> speaking about you, you're very popular as a motivational speaker and also as a multifaceted, multi talented personality in different areas. First thing we'd like to ask you, how do you manage yourself? And most importantly, how do you think uh, that self-management really play an important role when we speak of managing time and managing ourselves in life? Because you're into many things, many different fields. Okay. Uh, if you ask me, there are, there are two things that you've asked here. Number one is... How do I manage myself? And number two is how important is self-management? Now to answer your second question first, I think self-management is where you start towards any successful journey. I think it's the starting point of any journey. It's the foundation. Mm -hmm. So uh, because to, to be able to do anything, the first thing that you want to know is about yourself, about how to control yourself, about how to manage yourself. I think that's where self-management plays a huge role. And I think it's the starting point of any successful journey that you would like to take upon. Now, if you ask me how I manage myself among a lot of things that I'm doing, there are three aspects to it. The first thing that I do is a self-analysis. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Because what is more important is to know where we stand. Very true. Well done. Right? So, I spend a lot of time speaking to myself. I know a lot of people think I'm gone nuts, but that's okay. <laughs> I, it sometimes it's a silent contemplation where I'm just sitting and thinking about what's going what's to happen next, what am I going to do next. Mm -hmm. And I've, I had, I've had even my dad walking up to me and asking, is, is there anything bothering you? Are you all right or what? Because you're, you're so lost in thoughts. And I just tell him, that's okay, I'm just lost in thoughts and I'm thinking about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a conversation with myself. I, I just speak to myself sometimes, uh, especially when I'm alone, when I drive alone. And I, and I keep analyzing on what I love, what I can, what I cannot. On a lighter note, even one day when I was driving, I was speaking to myself and I noticed that people were staring at me differently. And only after a few minutes, I realized that I had not put on my helmet and I was just speaking to myself without a helmet and people thought I was probably mad. So I spent a lot of time speaking to myself, understanding myself on mm -hmm. what works for me, what doesn't work for me, my strengths, my weaknesses, what I love doing, what I hate doing. Mm -hmm. So all these analysis plays a huge role, mm -hmm. right? And if you ask me, if you compare a human being to a computer, mm -hmm. self-analysis is like your antivirus mm -hmm. uh, in two aspects. The first thing is that an antivirus helps the computer stay calm in tough situations. Yeah. So if you have a good understanding of yourself, you will stay composed when tough situations arise. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the second thing is that antivirus has to be updated on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Now you have to spend enough time with yourself on a daily basis speak a lot with yourself and every single day understand where you stand. Mm -hmm. Now the second part is self-motivation. Mm -hmm. Now I've understood where I stand, I know what I'm good at, I know what I like and I don't like. Now it's time for me to get some positive energy and some motivation to probably work on what I need to work. So the, the problem that a lot of us have is that we wait for something really big to happen to get the motivational energy. Now, probably to, to attend a motivational session, to, to watch a motivational program, to listen to a motivational speech. Mm -hmm. Of course, I do agree that these things give you a lot of motivation. But what we miss out on are the small, small things that can give us little dosages of motivation on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Now, for example, these days we all use uh, our smartphones to keep alarms and we no more use the old style alarm clocks. Yes. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And smartphones let you label your alarms. You can give names to your alarms. Yeah. Now, we all keep names right from uh, keep the pressure cooker to, you know, make sure you get ready for the show to pack up your bag to a lot of things. So what I do is my first alarm at 5 a.m. in the morning says this will be an amazing day. Okay. okay. Right. So when I wake, when the alarm rings, when I wake up in the morning at 5, the first thing that I look at is this will be an amazing day. And that gives you a tiny dosage of motivation, doesn't Very it? True. Mm, right? True. And I keep changing it. Now, for example, today I had this program. 
so my morning alarm said you're going to have a great program today mm -hmm. right these are small things that actually can give you a lot of motivation mm -hmm. maybe let's try it now say with me just tell that this will be an amazing day in my life this will be an amazing, amazing day. day in my life now louder this, this will be, be an amazing, amazing day, day in, in my life. life. <laughs> now see the effect that it takes on you. Both of you are smiling a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So these are tiny little things that can give you a lot of motivation on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I consider the first two hours in the morning to be most precious. Very mm -hmm. true. I've seen a lot of people just wake up in the morning, open their laptops and they start working on their official work right in the morning. Which I would say is not advisable because after half a day you will not have the energy and enthusiasm to do it. Exactly. Right? Mm. Because you are doing something which is consuming your energy and not doing something which is giving you some energy. Mm -hmm. So in the morning for about one or two hours, it's very important to get some tiny dosages of motivation. Probably hit the gym, do some workout if that gives you happiness. Mm -hmm. Or do something that makes you very happy so that the rest of the day you can have all the energy to do whatever you want in life. Mm -hmm. And the third one is self-development. Now I have an understanding of what I'm good at, what I'm bad at. I've also gained enough energy and motivation to work on what I need to and now it's time for me to work on what I'm supposed to. Mm -hmm. Now here also, all of us have strengths and weaknesses. Most of us make this mistake of focusing too much on the weaknesses and trying to get rid of them while forgetting the strengths that we have. Right? Both are equally important. It's very important to hone your existing skills, make them better and also work on skills that you may need to pay some attention on and to you know develop on them so these are the things that i do to manage myself one is speak to myself every day have a proper analysis of myself number two is follow some methodologies to get some tiny dosages of motivation on a daily basis and number three is spend time equally on my strengths and my weaknesses mm -hmm. now uh Gautana, when you talk about the now you talk about all about the uh, how we can improve yourselves to be, become someone much much better on a daily basis. Now, there are people who seem to be confused uh, in their lives. They, when they face a, a, some kind of a challenge, they try to try to withdraw from it, and you, the, they try to fail themselves even before the, they, they face a challenge. Now, if you take a challenge, there are people that can actually change the world. That they, that they take an initiative to, to change the world, to uh, change the society of the people who are living in the society. So, in uh, in general, let me ask you, um, what makes a challenge worth taking or facing? I think the happiness that you get when you finish that challenge is the only thing that motivates you to keep going. Mm -hmm. Now, for example, uh, I can give you an instance. In December 2015, Chennai, the place I lived, mm -hmm. uh, I live, mm -hmm. faced with a mighty flood in the history of uh, you know Chennai. Yes. And there was water up to six to eight feet at a lot of places. Even in my house, it was about five and a half, six feet. So if I just step out of my house, I would have water till my neck. Oh, okay. So that's the kind of impact that the floods had. And there are a lot of people who went out of their way to help each other. Mm -hmm. And specifically, we had a radio jockey uh, by name Balaji and an actor by name Siddharth who mm -hmm. actually gathered a lot of people. Now, both of them are popular faces. It's very easy for them to unite people who are working discreetly. That's right. right? Now, it was a huge challenge to revive the city because the city had faced massive floods. Many people went homeless. Mm -hmm. A lot of problems happened. So these two people made sure to unite a lot of youngsters, mm -hmm. gather a huge force, mm -hmm. take up the challenge and help each and every one of them in need. Mm -hmm. Now if you go and ask them, they didn't get anything out of it except happiness and satisfaction when they have done that challenge, yeah. when they have achieved it. So anybody who is an achiever, who takes up challenges, who goes out of his way to do something, who goes beyond his limit, is somebody who is motivated by happiness he gets at the end of it. Now there is, there is uh, a trainer in my company who often keeps telling this quote, he says, uh, success is not the key to happiness. Happiness is the key to success. You cannot be happy because you're a successful person. You might earn a lot of money, you might have a lot of wealth, but you can't really be happy. But if you're happy about what you're doing, if you love what you're doing, I think that is success. I think happiness is the answer to what you asked me, Varuna. It's the biggest motivator for people who take up challenges mm. and go out of their way. Mm -hmm. right. Very interesting, uh, Gautam. When speaking of um, actually life, life I would say is a roller coaster ride. Of you course. get so many twists and turns and things like that. And especially when it's when you speak of your life, you started speaking in the age of three, and at the same time, uh, you've gone to a level where uh, when you're 22 years old, uh, you went into entrepreneurship and you started your own company and all of that. So, how do you think that uh, the ball game of uh, leadership really play an important role, especially at a younger age? I think the ball game of leadership at a younger age, the challenge comes when you have to make people accept you as a leader. Mm 
Right. Right. Now, when you go and stand before them as as an entrepreneur, they only still look at you as a child. You know, it's very difficult for people to make uh, you know to make people accept you mm -hmm. as a leader. Now, I'll I'll give you an example. Now, mine is basically an events and entertainment management firm, and we were managing this wedding event at at a very grand venue. So, what happened is the venue has certain rules and regulations as always, and though the venue knew that we were the events ma event managers. they did not reach out to us send us a list of rules and regulations things that are allowed not allowed allowed with approvals and all of that mm -hmm. and also we also missed out on sending an email introducing ourselves as the event manager so there was obviously a communication gap so when we went to the venue on the day with a huge setup now the venue manager came and said you need approvals for these things you cannot do it <laughs> now what happens is the moment we try speaking something he says uh, how long you have been into events management okay 2 years 3 years okay i think that's why probably you didn't know it so he started getting into a very defensive mode and kind of started arguing to prove himself right now the point here is when you are faced with such a leadership challenge when when it is uh, you know becoming difficult to make people accept you as a leader mm -hmm. the only thing that can help you is your art of communication so i just let him speak and at the end i only told him sir we are not here to decide if you know uh, we are experienced in our field or you are experienced in your field together we are here to serve the same customer mm -hmm. so he has trusted you with the venue he has trusted us with the events now together it's a collective responsibility for both of us to make sure that the customer goes back happy feels happy about your venue feels happy about our event management so when i told this he thought for a while and said okay wait let me get the approvals and and end of the day i got the work done so when when it, it becomes very difficult to prove yourself as a leader you you always have to communicate in a way that people understand what the end goal is mm -hmm. yes right communicating the end goal or the vision that you have will make people realize that you are a leader and slowly you get accepted as a leader at a young age now for example uh, we work with a lot of sound engineers for live concerts and when we go as event managers what happens is now there is a sound engineer who's say very experienced in his field who knows the in and out of sound engineering mm -hmm. you go there the concert is in progress you hear some noise in the speakers you go and tell him uh, you know what i hear some noise in the speakers he look at you and say what i know what i'm doing mm. right because his experience and his ego will prevent him from accepting something from a guy who's very young into this industry mm -hmm. that's right so what happened is the next time when i had a similar issue i just went to him and said hey you know what the sound is amazing you're doing a great job but only thing is if you can remove that one noise i think this will be one of the best concerts mm -hmm. he was like got him sure let me do it right away right so the way you speak the way you articulate your thoughts i think makes a lot of difference for you as a leader i think the biggest change that can happen to a leader is the style of communication and style of influencing people Mm -hmm. That is very true. That's amazing. Right, so yes, Gautam, let me ask you on uh, something uh, else. I mean, something that's also related to what we discussed earlier about self-management. Now, the way I think is that no matter how much you plan ahead, how much you uh, you know determ are determined to do to do, uh, succeed in something, there's always uh, emotional intelligence that plays a major role in this. It, it affects your uh, you know corporate life also personal life. So overall, it affects your whole life as a as a different aspect of uh, personal management and you know facing. the life as a um, challenge so what is your thought on this how do you manage this emo emotional intelligence and how do you like uh, control it when it comes to facing the world okay uh, emotional intelligence uh, when when we speak about emotional intelligence with a lot of people it sounds like a jargon to them something like an artificial intelligence so yeah. anybody who's watching this show emotional intelligence is pretty simple it's just about understanding and controlling your emotions at the same time also understanding the other person's emotions with whom you're communicating to right so when you look at understanding emotions now let's let's take a negative emotion for an example now we classify emotions into two positive and negative mm -hmm. so let's take a negative emotion say for example anger yeah. okay. right so if you cannot control your anger it's going to cause a lot of destruction to your relationships to your friendships and a lot of other things absolutely mm -hmm. yeah, right? right you yeah. you just go blast at somebody it's not going to work you might be angry but it's very essential to control yourself when you're really angry mm -hmm. so especially what uh, in in corporate world there are a lot of times we lose temper we we talk to our associates in a way that that is very harsh mm -hmm. so what i do is again there are small small things that can actually make a lot of difference this is something that i learned from one of my friends so when i'm really angry about something or someone i just go type a mail to them or i write a message to them on mm -hmm. my phone mm -hmm. i say whatever i want to say okay you know i i scold them i abuse them i i express pour out all my anger on that one email but i don't hit the send button 
You don't send it. <laughs> I don't send it. What I'll do is I'll I'll hold myself from hitting the send button, mm -hmm. and 10-15 minutes later when I'm when I'm calmed, mm -hmm. I'll go open that email and read it, and I'll be really surprised to find that if I was the one who wrote that email. Yeah. Right. So a lot of times we 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 just pour out our emotions without having any control over them. Mm -hmm. But once you try and stop yourself from pouring it. or maybe have a medium in between now mm -hmm. between me and the person whom i am angry upon the in between medium that i have is my mailbox if i have something like that and i put it there i pour all my feelings all my anger on that mailbox mm. you know i type whatever i want yeah. and later when i come back and read it you'll you'll really be surprised to find out if you're the one who wrote that email Absolutely. and you'll never feel like sending that email you'll just send it to trash directly yeah. right so that's how you control your emotions these are small <laughs> exercises of course think before you leap of course think before <laughs> you leap you you rightly said it right mm. so whenever we have negative emotions positive emotions are sometimes okay even when you don't control it it's mm. fine mm. if you're so happy you know you you are you're uncontrolled you're just jumping with joy it's just going to make a few more people jealous of you nothing more than that to be honest but negative emotions really need a control yeah right you have to have a control so follow some mechanisms like this that can keep your negative emotions under control because you know better about yourself mm -hmm. now are you a person who gets angry easily mm -hmm. are you someone who gets sad or depressed easily so have some way to you know control yourself now coming to understanding someone else's emotions that's the second part of emotional intelligence like the first part is understanding and controlling yourself and the second part is understanding someone else so when it comes to understanding someone else's emotions that's where the quality of empathy comes into picture yeah right you'll have to really put yourself into the shoes of the other person to understand what he is going through mm. before you react or speak something to him mm. now for example couple of days ago uh, you know uh, we had a small issue in our uh, kitchen mm -hmm. and there was this guy who came to fix it okay. uh, the plumber so when he came in uh, you know my mom had just cleaned the house and he came in and he made the floor a little dirty uh because his feet was dirty now my mom was a little angry he was like he's making my floor dirty <laughs> and i told her wait he's going to five six houses and that's his job his job is to just go to all places you know all problems fix them and come back home so it's obvious that his feet is going to be dirty now that level of an understanding like small small things where we where we lose control understanding someone else and putting ourselves in someone else's shoes i think makes it very important I think these are the two aspects of emotional intelligence that we can talk about. One is to uh, control ourselves and the other one is to speak to someone else. Well that is very important uh, Gautam and thank you very much for that. And in fact uh, when speaking of leaders would like to ask you uh, do you think that a leader really should have a title a person who really needs a title in order to move forward in life? Uh I don't think a leader should really have a title. If you ask me my answer would be a straightforward no. I'll give you a beautiful example. Uh mm -hmm. I I can remember if it was 1 year 1 and a half years ago I was traveling to this place called Tirunelveli which is about 10 hours from my home and uh, after after work you know I have to take a tuk tuk go to the bus stop which is about 1 hour from there take a bus which takes me to Tirunelveli for 10 hours and I went there to teach all these students about business communication skills so that day I was getting a little late for my uh, bus mm -hmm. I boarded this tuk tuk and I was panicking out of out of all my uh, you know uh, anxiety i was just telling him can you please go fast and all that stuff mm -hmm. and uh, i then called my mom and said mom okay i'm i'm on time i'll probably reach on time don't worry and i was again pushing the driver please go fast now this driver sensed that i was in panic and then he said uh, so you're going to trinalveli i owe her from your conversation i said yes i'm going there and he started telling me a lot of beautiful stories about trinalveli he was telling me the beauty specialties of that place mm -hmm. and then uh, you know slowly and steadily i felt relaxed and then time on time he was telling me sir don't worry we'll be on time i'll ensure that i take you on time mm -hmm. and when we reached the bus stop i was just 10 minutes before my boarding time and when i got down and gave him the money he looked at me and said sir i don't know for what purpose you're going but for whatever purpose you're going all the best mm. right now that day he made a difference to my life and i think that is leadership quality what title does he have he's he's a tuk tuk driver yeah. right a leader should be able to motivate people he motivated me when i was panicking a leader should be able to make people feel valued he did make me feel valued by wishing me all the best when i went so i think a leader doesn't really need a title it's about the choice that you take like stephen covey beautifully says in his book seven habits of highly effective people mm -hmm. leadership is never about a position it's about a choice if you can take the choice of becoming a leader today you are a leader
All right. So that's about that as well. So also, Gautam, let me ask you about the time management part when it comes to you, you know, managing your life. You need some time. I mean, just like in, in your incident, you need to, I mean, people need to uh, manage their time to, in order to uh, you know, reach their goals on time. So what's your thought about this, about this, uh, about time management when it comes to living life as a person? All right. So I also had a lot of problem with time management, to be honest. I was not so great at managing time. Mm -hmm. So I went and asked my mentor at uh, Toastmasters International, the forum that I'm part of, mm -hmm. which is aimed at self-development, uh, communication development, and leadership development. So when I asked him, he said, okay, follow this. He gave me some simple things like when you go to office, just write down the top three things that you want to do for the day. And one by one, keep striking them off. So what I do is I just go to office, write down the top three things. And sometimes when I strike it off, I strike it off with so much of happiness. You know, you're done for the day. I, st I strike the task off and I feel so happy. Because when we put a lot of things into our mind and we also use our mind to work, mind really loses track of what we are supposed to do. Right? So it's very, that's why they always say write down your goals somewhere and keep looking at it so that you have that motivation. Mm -hmm. So the best way to manage time is write down all your tasks. Mm -hmm. Prioritize them. Check them one by one. Mm -hmm. Unless you have the habit of writing, mm -hmm. it's going to be very difficult for you to manage all of them from your mind. Okay. So Gautam, what do you think about Sri Lanka all the way you're coming to Sri Lanka from India? All right, Sri Lanka has, has become like my second home ever since I joined Toastmasters because mm -hmm. I come here for all the uh, annual and semi-annual conferences that we have. And even now I've come for a grand conference called Ovation 2017 where we're going to have the current international president, Mr. Mike Stokey, and the incoming international president from Sri Lanka itself, uh, Toastmaster Balraj Arunasalam. So I come here for conferences. I make a lot of friends. I love uh, you know, speaking to people. I love meeting new people. And every time I come, I make sure that I stay for three, four days more, mm -hmm. visit a lot of places. Now, I've been to places like Anuradhapura or Sigiri or Kandy, and I love hanging out. And it's a small, beautiful country that I, I keep visiting, mm -hmm. and, and I love visiting too. Okay. Right, Gautam. Thank you very much for yeah. joining us in Rise and Shine today. And it's amazing to have yeah. you. And we were very much inspired. Of course, uh, we hope that uh, the viewers are also very inspired uh, about listening to you as well. And uh, it's time to wind up our show with yeah. a beautiful song of yours. And you're a performer, a singer as well. So we would like to listen to one of the singular performances that we would like to listen from you. <laughs> okay. Being a part of the Sinhalese community for a few years as well. So, okay. yeah. Uh, Sinhala songs, yeah. So, what happens is my friends keep sending messages Machan try this number try that number <laughs> so in that way a uh, couple of songs if I can remember I'll try so if I forget the lyrics I think Buddhima and Varuna will help me out right <laughs> sure <laughs> definitely <laughs> all right so well with that we're going to wind up today's uh, Friday's Rise and Shine show it's great being with you and right now let's go take a listen to Gautam's single song okay Dale Gangulillak Sema Sitai Hitaboma Dore ay situili sena dare en pengila Dale gangulellak sema sitai hitaboma Dore ay situili sena dare en pengila Jeevitaye satuthai maadutuve Sagare Gamburai He Hengume Sita Marute Velemin Nastiha Bala Obumata Adere Kiyu Matakaya Hina Yakwage Etamidume Didulana Punsanda Kwage Eliya eh gumhite obumaya chivite mage I hope I got it right. Got it right. That was great. Thank you, thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you very right, much, so Gautam. Much. And with that, it's time to wind mm -hmm. up our program on Rise and Shine. And see yeah. you same time, same place tomorrow as well. Till then, bye bye. Take care. Have a good day.